something with the question. You can fit it in this year. You can see it. It's too big. Where are you going to get the key to it? Discussion. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regular scheduled Tabor Town Council meeting scheduled for June 22nd, 2020. First call the meeting to order and ask for an adoption of the agenda as presented, please. Councilor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adopt the agenda as presented. Motion on the table. All in favor? Okay, now, thank you. On to item number, number three, adoption of the minutes item 3.1, minutes of regular meeting councils uh, June the 8th, 2020. Mr. Armfield. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. These meeting minutes are there for council's consideration. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? Someone ready to make a motion? Councilor Tams. Mr. Mayor, move that council adopts the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on June 8th, 2020 as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, now we'll see. Thank you. On to item number 4.164th Avenue Stormwater Review. Mr. Arbel. And there was a recently an item come up during the standing items uh, motion made by Councillor Strovis to discuss the stormwater issue along the north side of 64th Avenue. MPE has done some work on that, and Mr. Shearer is here to present that to Council. All right, thank you, Mr. Shearer. Thank you, Mr. So as we looked into the modeling for, for the 64th Avenue, and that's from 53rd Street to 56th Street on the north side of 64th Avenue, that, that ditch and the culverts will not hold two inches of water over the 24 hour period. So um, we can you know, bring this forth as a future capital consideration if council would like to do. Um, there's a few options. Um, modeling isn't, I should point this out, modeling isn't always 100% accurate. You would need LIDAR of the specific ditch widths, depths, everything else. So I actually think there's a better model, there's a there's a better storm system there than what the modeling shows. Because we had five inches of rain over 36 hours and it did surcharge. There's no doubt about that, but it handled it, right? So we're, we're just basically looking for council's direction of where they would like to go with this project and uh, considerations for future capital projects. Thank you. Any questions arising? Just a clarification question for myself, uh, Mr. Shearer. Uh, what, what's the uh, the culvert? Are they all the same down that stretch there? The, the same? Yeah, it looks like they're all um, 450 diameter. Okay. So would you have a, a, an opinion to, obviously you said it handle it, but it's so bigger would be better? When we looked at that, we would double each culvert, another 450 in there. Okay. Yeah. It looked like the modeling on 56th Street, it, it modeled good. It, so there's enough, there's two uh, culverts in there. One's a 450, one's a 600. So that currently has capacity. So the, the project would be to, to add another culvert to each of the, uh, the uh, roads input into each area business and to regrade the ditches and into the storm pond. All right, Councillor Brun. That would require uh, four culverts on 64th Avenue. Then, I understand. Yes. Um, this is, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. I think this has been an issue for a few years. Whenever we get a heavy storm, it does build up there. But I'm wondering, downstream, can we handle extra flow coming that fast through there? Downstream, which way? Uh, I'm assuming this flows to the east. It goes to the east, yes. Now downstream from these culverts, if we make them bigger and we don't hold it back so much, are we going to end up with problems at the other end? No. Okay. That goes, flows right into the storm pond, Okay. which flows right into a pump station. So the that's a question just in case we overload yes. just further down. We're not passing the buck on to someone else. Nope. Uh, personally, I'd like to see this done sooner and later because it has been on the back of our minds for a while. I think Councillor Strovis and I were driving around it would be six years ago, probably at least, and looking at the flooding. And at the time, we thought, between us un unskilled people, we thought maybe bigger culvers might help. So I'm glad that Councillor Strovis brought this up, and I think we should act on it if we can. Just this is a side point. I did have this in the 56th Avenue stormwater project. It just never got funding. Yeah, I was reading your alternative, Sarah. Sorry that. Um, I think should we wait and see what the cost of it is, and perhaps proceed, or do you Matt, what do you expect for culverts cost? Well, we did have a bit of an estimate. I just got this in. 
uh, MP projects at about $130,000 to regrade everything, put the culverts in. Okay. Just put in four culverts. You really need to regrade it and get the proper direction of flow. That that's part of, that's part of the best initiative, is to ensure that it flows where it needs to go. I didn't expect that high of a cost, but thank you, Mr. Stravos. Your Worship, to Mr. Shearer, just uh, for uh, clarification. So, is is this something that that you would anticipate that you could work into? Uh, your own uh, works down the road somewhere, or would you prefer this to get uh, uh, contracted out? Uh, give us your thoughts on that. Our thoughts that the way that these storms are going and where our winters are going, we'd sooner contract it out. I mean, we kept busy with the snow removal for five months last year. It was ongoing. And that's when we usually do things like this. And we try to find time. I have a whole bunch of coverts in back of the public workshop we want to install throughout the town. We just can never find enough time. So adding to it, we prefer a capital project. Suggest that we put this in next year's capital uh, uh, budget. Is, is that what you would prefer to deal with it next year? Because I'm sure you've got lots on your plate for this year. That It's whatever council chooses. If you choose to fund it this year, we're pretty sure we can get it done. Of course, we're on a short time frame here, so getting it done this year, your your costs may come in a little higher than anticipated. But we're still seeing costs in short, in short time frame, and they're still reasonable. There isn't that many projects out right now, so I, I don't anticipate those projects, those costs to accelerate. Mr. Bruin, uh, that's just what uh, uh, Councillor Strohs was saying. Perhaps we do have a crew near the area that now that's doing some contract work, it may save some money that way. So um, I'd sure like to see exactly what it would cost and when we could get at it. So we can bring back some you know, the future the costs at the next meeting. And we could actually, uh, if, if council would prefer, we get a couple quotes from uh, local contractors to do that work too. All right, thank you. Any other questions? We're all on board with that. Suggestion, so Councillor Travis. For clarification, Your Worship, but do we need to put this in a motion for you to come <coughs> back with this here? You want to make the motion, Mr. Councillor? I think Brewer? there was an alternative there uh, that speaks to what uh, the general suggestion is, Councillor Brun. Um, Mr. Mayor, at this time I'm prepared to make a motion that Council directs the administration to provide costs for the 64th Avenue stormwater upgrades for the next Council meeting on July 20th, 2020, for a capital improvement consideration. Um, that's my motion, but I do question it. Is July 20th long enough time? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, my motion stands in. All right, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried now. Thank you. On to item 5, 5.1, bylaw 12 2020, Mr. Arfield. Yes, Mr. Mayor, you'll know that we've been working with the municipal district of the Tabor for probably about two years now uh, on redrafting the intermunicipal development plan. The first reading of that is in front of you. Uh, maybe Ms. Monks would like to come up and speak to that plan, answer any questions that council may have. Uh, it is in front of you for your consideration towards first reading, though. Ms. Monks. Thank you. Ms. Monks. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Your Worship, members of council. So um, exactly as Mr. Armful Armfelt told you, we've been working on this plan for quite a while. Uh, several versions have been brought before you and to the Intermunicipal Development Plan or Committee. And at the June 3rd meeting, they actually passed a resolution to recommend this draft as final proposal to our respective councils for approval. So this document identifies the land boundary immediately adjacent to the town and uh, several quarters out into the MD jurisdiction and splits it into policy areas. Each of these areas has then been reviewed for potential future development and what the town and the MD would prefer to see occurring in each of those areas. Discussions have occurred as to how the area could develop out and what both of our municipalities would need to see in order to support those types of development. So in order to ensure joint consideration, there is an added requirement for area structure plans to facilitate well-planned development in several of the areas identified as impactful to the town. So there's an emphasis on collaboration and early conversation with regards to impacts and solutions for different forms of development. Identification of areas for mutual benefit and growth are in place. Um, this last update added areas of mutual interest to include the MD of Tabor Airport, the town wastewater treatment 
uh, facility and pivot lands. And so there's a general understanding that we want to protect for those areas for mutual benefit. A recognition of the entry areas into the town is provided for in section 4.4 with encouragement of enhancing the visual appeal of those areas. Um, the new IDP includes a detailed dispute resolution section which provides for set policies and procedures to be followed to attempt to resolve issues prior to any formal mediation process. And I think those are the majority of the changes. Um, I think if you've looked at the old municipal development plan, it's around 10 pages. This is a much more robust document. Um, so if council gives first reading to this bylaw today, the MD and the town will identify a public consultation process and work together to communicate with residents of both municipalities. Any inputs received will be reviewed collaboratively and any amendments to this document will be reviewed by IMDC before being brought back to council for a potential public hearing and second and third reading by council. So at this time, administration is seeking first reading of bylaw 12-2020 as presented. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? <coughs> Councillor Beckering. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of comments as opposed to questions. Uh, as as Council might know, I myself and uh, Councillor Strovis are members of the IMDC, the Municipal Development Committee, and the alternate being the Mayor Prokop. And I think I'd like to applaud, first of all, both administrations of the Town of Tabor and the MD of Tabor for their hard work. We had a lot of meetings. There was some good negotiation, good discussion was held, and we came to a reasonable conclusion, in my opinion. I think this new uh, plan is comprehensive. It's a vast improvement of the last one, and I think we can, with confidence, say, let's go forward and collaborate with our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions arising, comments? Someone prepared to make a motion? Councillor Garner. Your Worship, I can make a motion. I would like to make a motion that Council gives first reading to bylaw 12 220 as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. On to item number six, action items, item 6.1 economic relief considerations. Mr. Armfield. Does Council know that you've been addressing some requests coming from uh, our leaseholders and uh, renters that uh, rent property from the Town of Tabor with regards to some comp uh, compensation for the COVID situation? This is another one that has come in for Council to consider based off of the track that uh, Council put administration on to solicit such letters. So it's in front of you for your consideration. Ms. Van Ham, do you have anything to add to this? Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Thank you, Mr. Armstead. Um, this act is a little bit different than the historic acts have been, in which the club is looking for a future waiver for their October payment, rather than a refund for their previous payment. And I'm available for any questions, if there are any. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any questions whatsoever? Someone prepared to make a motion. Councilor Firth. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> excuse me. I move that Council waives the Tabor Curling Club October 2020 lease payment of $5,300 plus GST due to the financial losses endured from April 2020 to the provincially mandated opening date related to the facility closure as directed by Alberta Health Services. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Bruin. A question. So their their monthly lease payment is fifty three hundred plus GST. Uh, Ms. Panham, can you confirm that amount? Yes, uh, to council, their lease payment monthly starting in October is fifty three hundred dollars plus GST. Basically, what they're asking for is us to forgive them an October uh, lease payment. Then. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Once again, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Chair Nemes, thank you. On to item 6.2, Coffee with the Council. Mr. Arpel. Yes, as you, uh, again, uh, addressing the COVID situation, uh, the Coffee with Councils have been basically put on pause since about March time. So bringing those back, uh, Ms. Brennan may want to come up and just discuss with Council uh, what the plan is to get coffee with council back on track if that's council's desire thank you Ms. good Brennan. afternoon council nice to present to you in person this time 
Um, so yes, uh, not much more to add in your RFD there. Uh, we've given you a number of options to consider. Obviously, the COVID pandemic is a changing um, event that we're still living through. And uh, with the uh, threat of a second wave, we decided to give council all options available to them. I only have to change one thing that's in the RFD. Uh, after it was uh, published, we did have a member of the public ask us when your next meeting was, and we said you were deciding today. So. I'm available for any questions if you have any. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? Councillor Towns. Not a question per se, but um, you know, we have it there for one for July, and then you get July, August, which were poorly attended anyway. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, if they're talking about the second wave and worried about it, I'm, I'm of the expressed opinion, let's begin in September and carry on from there. <clears throat> I think that's a better starting date than July. All right, thank you. Any questions? Mr. Ranger, so that's basically, basically what you're saying is option one. I like option one, yes. With that, Mr. Mayor, I'm prepared to make a motion. All right. Mr. Mayor, move that council directs administration to resume coffee with council for the rest of 2020, starting in September, while adhering to all public health orders. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry now, thank you. On to item 6.3, capital purchases of patrol carbines for Tabor Police Service. Mr. Arfield. Yes, and I see the chief is here. Uh, he may want to come up and support me, supporting him in this request. Uh, in my duties as secretary of the police commission, uh, it uh, was noted that uh, the patrol carbines uh, were past their usable life and a uh, request made to bring this forward as soon as possible to council. So, uh, Chief Abel, if you'd like to add anything to that. Um, no, uh, you work the, uh, put in a request uh, for a decision <coughs> and the, uh, uh, provided a detailed, uh, my opinion, overview of uh, our need. And as our capital budget has already been passed and this was not on the list, I'm uh, respectfully through the commission making this request uh, of council to consider this. Thank you. Councillor Beckering. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to the Chief. Uh, I appreciate the fact that these carbines are probably worn out and affecting the safety of the officers and the public by extension. However, knowing life cycles of carbines, as you well know, couldn't you have anticipated that last fall in your budget discussion, sir? Uh, it's a good point. Uh, I'm not a firearms expert. I rely on others. Uh, I am the chief, though, so I should have that plan. You're correct. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Stravos. Yes, uh, Your Worship, just to maybe to elaborate a little further on this, it was actually a uh, uh, an issue that came up that they were sent away for, for analysis, that it was brought up that... Uh, you know that uh, they had to anticipate it that uh, they were going to break down like they were and being that the parts were available they they were they had been replacing parts for for a while on these but uh, uh, you know it's like anything they wear out and, and how do you uh, how do you figure out a life cycle and how long it's going to go for because we all want the life cycle to go on forever so we don't have to replace these things but there is an opportunity now to to move forward at, at a savings because of what the federal government is doing uh, with the with the new gun legislation, so uh, you know uh, we can do this now and save some money, or we can do it, put it in the capital budget for next year, and go without those carbines and, and cost us more money. So it's it's a pretty simple answer, in my opinion. All right, yeah, and thank you, Chief, for the presentation. I, I caught that at the police commission meeting as well, and you know it's things were out right. Like I said, I don't know that the guys can be faulted in any shape or form. It was as a result of a failure that caused you to look into that further, right? So you right. did, and you did your due diligence, and uh, that was <laughs> the end result information. So it's, um, it's to me, it's just something that's uh, has to be dealt with sooner or later. It's it's no fault of anybody's whatsoever. It's just wear and tear. And like I said, you had a lot of use over the last number of years, and it's just time. And I commend you for I think it's a did you say a sixty percent roughly figure of whatever those previous ones are worth now. Yes, we, we were able to uh, find an alternative yeah. that is going to be... And also, is that not American-made? Yes, it is. <laughs> so I guess you can look at that as a positive also. So, yeah, all things considered, it's to me, it's uh, it's a no-brainer, just something uh, true it wasn't budgeted for, but it's, uh, it's a necessity that has to be dealt with uh, sooner or later. Councillor Bruin. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I agree with 
firmly with what both you and Councillor Strauss say, and I'd like to make a motion that Council approve the recommendation of the Taylor Municipal Police Commission to purchase patrol carbines for the Taylor Police Service, not to exceed $15,000 from the capital reserves. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? Councillor Becker? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a comment, I guess. Uh, you just use carbines are American made, you said, Chief? Uh, they're made, I believe, in Idaho. Idaho? Well, if anybody knows guns, it's the Americans. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Once again, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. May I be excused? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. All right, on to item 6.4, community events. Mr. <coughs> Council will know, Mr. Mayor, that we've been trying to hit the moving target that uh, is COVID and the province's relation to that. Um, and we had brought a uh, recommended uh, motion to Council previous to uh, cancel candidate events, essentially, uh, with the change to the conditions that now we're now operating under. It allows us to a little bit more freedom on Canada Day to actually host some events, so we are looking to do that. So this is essentially a rescinding, we're requesting a rescinding of the uh, previous motion, essentially, in order to uh, facilitate some events on Canada Day. Um, would you like to add anything? <laughs> Unless there's any questions. <clears throat> any questions arising? No? Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Mayor. So we'll just then follow provincial guidelines after this. So we'll rescind this and then follow provincial Correct. guidelines. And we won't need any other dates. If something flares up, we do have the ability to then shut down again. Correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Some are prepared to make a motion. Councillor Garner. Mr. Mayor, I can make that motion that Council rescinds Resolution 2012-2020, directing administration to cancel all public events in or around town-owned property until July 4th, 2020, with notification to be presented to those involved, and directs administration to move forward with public events according to the guidelines distributed by the Government of Alberta. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Phillips. Uh, on to Mr. item. Or, or, pardon me? Sorry. Oh. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, on to uh, item uh, 6.5, first quarter financial statements. Mr. Arpel. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you will know that uh, the Audit Committee passed the first quarter financial statements. Mr. Orwell, you might want to come up and uh, answer any questions that Council may have, but these are presented for Council's consideration, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Orwell. Well, thank you very much, members of Council. So before you is the year-to-date and audited financial statements for the last three months, ended 31st of March, and uh, this has gone through the Audit Committee, so I'm just here to answer questions if there is any. All right, thank you. Any questions whatsoever? Someone prepared to make a motion? Councillor Firth. Mr. Mayor, I move that Council accepts the unaudited financial statements for the three months ending March 31st, 2020 for information purposes. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry on, we'll see. Thank you. On to item 6.6, .6, Department Reports. I'll go through them individually. If you have a question, just please ask accordingly. <clears throat> Finance Activity Report, Administrative Service Report, CAO Activity Report, Fire Department Report, <coughs> Treatment Facilities Report. <coughs> Councillor Beckering. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could we get an update, perhaps, on the up, uh, on the financial situation with the fire hall? Mr. Arfield. <coughs> Yes, I would have to look to Chief Munshaw to come up, uh, but um, now the emergency services building uh, that, that uh, has recently been moved into, I'm assuming that that's what uh, Council was looking for. Um, essentially that project was done on time uh, according to the contractor and actually a little bit under budget. I don't I don't know the exact figure as to what it was under budget, but we certainly came in under budget on that. Um, we did not, uh, we didn't come back to council for anything above and beyond. So 
that was a success factor there on time and on budget. Right. Thank you. That's sufficient, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. All right. On to treatment facilities reports. Councillor Broom. Mr. Mayor, uh, my question may be more, may be off on this, but uh, I'm looking at our May, Jan, January to May 2020 residential diversion. Um, just try and question that second chart. What happened to our compost there? Or that is a mix of both. This is, uh, yes, would you see the charts with our, where we're diversion for residential and general waste recycling and compost? It's just clarification on that. So 76% is still being taken to the garbage now or how that, Sorry, that should say commercial. Okay. Not residential. Commercial okay. doesn't have uh, organics, it's just recycling i'm just recycling and, and garbage yes. okay thank you Gary. that's I a thought, typo My thought we had a huge a huge yeah. problem there but it looks good then okay yeah. thank you all right on to engineering and public works reports recreation activity report hr activity report and planning and economic development reports no other questions seeing that someone appeared to make a motion councillor firth Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the council accepts the department reports for information. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Your, your Worship. Just, Councilor Shamos. Um, just a question. Do we have to make note of, of the error that was there to be corrected? Uh, uh, you know, because it does say residential, should it? Sorry, with the what, Councilor Shamos? The, the, uh, on the diagram here for the uh, uh, diversion, it does say residential. Should, should that be corrected or should it be as, as amended? The motion the acceptance as amended i'm not quite it, sure is that mr Arfield? it's up to council's uh, comfort level you're accepting these department reports for information uh there was asked for clarification on the department report uh, mr shearer came up and provided you with that information you know rounding out the department report i would say you're safe to accept it for information but if you would like to accept it as amended uh, that's certainly up to council to do that but all right thank you councillor Stravis. what's your preference that's fine. It's recorded. Just it goes out, and just just so that uh, the members of the public don't think that there's something astray as well. Right. So a motion on the table. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. On to mayor and council reports. Councilor Garner. New to report. Right. Thank you, Councilor Stravas. Yes, Your Worship, nothing to uh, report at this time. Thank you, Councilor Bruin. Uh, not a lot to report. Uh, I've had uh, police commission meeting uh, discussions with the Highway 3 Executive Board. Um, we did, I did on my own, I went and got pictures of the Clearview Lodge sinks and ladder on the driveway. Thank you to the help, very much help from Inspector Kaler and Constable Larson who went up with the swather and took some really nice pictures of their uh, sink and ladders they drew on their sidewalk, which was really impressive. But, been busy talking to people and just being safe. All right, thank you. Councillor Firth. Mr. Mayor, I have attended uh, some of the EOC meetings, um, other meetings as required, including the first meeting of the Arts and Heritage Committee. Um, both Linden View and Clearview, we had a virtual coffee with Council, which I attended with um, both those facilities, which was interesting. Um, and also um, a virtual um, it was an economic and industrial impact of coronavirus um, presented by Economic Development Lethbridge and South Grow, which I attended virtually and had some good information. <coughs> Thank you. Time. Councillor Beckery. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Attended Tabor Exhibition Association meeting, uh, Recreation Board meeting, and uh, virtual meeting, Family Community Support Services. Everything's well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Towns. It's just nice, to, uh, Mr. Mayor, that. Uh, Committees are starting to meet again, and we're busy doing our thing, and we don't have to do it staring at these little iPads or on a computer screen. It's so much nicer to have a meeting in, in person with people and <coughs> being able to communicate. And uh, other than that, I have nothing to report. All right, thank you. And for myself, uh, I also uh, attended the uh, virtual meetings with Clearview Lodge and Lindenview. That was uh, very well done, I believe, and uh, went over pretty well. Also, the Clearview Lodge Parade, uh, as per the fire department in town, there was uh, 
response for that. That was Councillor Brown and Councillor Firth are also participating. So that was nice to see. Nice little parade and the, uh, the residents I think were extremely happy with that as well. So nice to see things changing and opening up. Uh, I attended a number of meetings as required also and um, that would be my report. Some are prepared to make a motion. Anyone? Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council accepts the Mayor and Council of Reports for information. Thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. On to uh, item 6.8, standing item requests. Mr. Arnfeld. This is the opportunity that Council has to ask administration any questions or give us any direction through the form of a motion. All right. Thank you. Councillor Chavez. So, uh, Your Worship, uh, just a, a question to administration um, about this uh, as we move forward with the Alberta Japan uh, Twinning Municipalities Association. It says there was a letter completed and has it been sent off to uh, uh, to the Twinning Association and have we started some wheels in motion as far as, as moving this, this project forward for next year? I will have to rely on Ms. Van Ham for some technical support there. Uh, Ms. Van Ham, did you catch that question? Um, yes, to the council. It, there was a letter sent to the Twinning Association saying that paper is undertaking that event. So we were, um, we we have been looking into uh, agendas and getting some more information for past practices from the Twinning Association and um, getting formulating some plans for entertainment and meals and that kind of thing for 2021. Does that answer your question, Councillor Strawis? Yes, I just was curious if the wheels were in motion, uh, and that, that's good to hear. Uh, uh, I don't know if, if, if uh, perhaps that we can be CC'd on some of the stuff so we know where it is uh, uh, coming, or at least myself, because I'm, I'm involved with the uh, Twinning Association. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Anything else, Councillor Becker? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was contacted by a concerned citizen uh, regarding trees on 47th Street between 53rd Avenue and 56th Avenue on the east side of 47th on the boulevard adjacent to St. Patrick's School. I think those trees are poplars, but I'm not sure. He said there's lots of dead branches in the top. He said, could the town please clean them up? I said, I don't know. I'll ask. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, to provide council with some information on that, uh, so we are aware that, that uh, those trees do need a pretty good haircut. Uh, they're elms, um, so I believe that precludes us till October uh, to trim those until October. Um, but there is a plan either internally or externally that those are going to get a haircut uh, <coughs> this year. Yes. Yep. Right. That's Thank place. you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Armfeld. Uh, no, no motion required. I'm glad you corrected me. I thought they were poplars, but they're elms. Eh? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Brown. I just uh, kind of a follow-up question on Mr. Beckering's. Um, so the general rule is we do not touch elms until they've become dormant again, and the reason for that is to prevent the spread of Dutch elm disease. That is correct. Okay. Yes. Some people are wondering why, and that's that's the reason. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, to, to Council, it's actually legislated, uh, provincially legislated. It's provincially legislated that we can't uh, trim elms. That's, that, that's very interesting because I don't think most people know that. That would might be something we could put out with our newsletter about that because during that last storm, a lot of elm trees were breaking or hanging very low and a lot of people are wondering about if they can or cannot cut them. Any emotion in that regard? Oh, just, I, just, I think for information, I think it's, it'd be smart if we just let people know the reason we're not trimming the elm trees. Mr. Arfield, uh, any issues that way your end or administratively or? No, I think we can probably work that into the, um, yeah, uh, Cornhouse Chronicles, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, for Council's additional information, last winter was quite hard on trees. There was a number of trees and we have taken out some uh, weeping birches actually uh, that did not make the winter that were also along uh, some of our right-of-ways uh, adjacent to the roadways. So. Yeah, we know that last winter was pretty tough on trees and uh, we had some work to do this fall, especially on the elms, to bring them up to speed. Mr. Garner. I'd like to bring up a matter in light that it is camping season. Uh, I see we have quite a bit of interest in people camping now out of the trout pond somewhat. Also, um, 
we have 16 really nice camping stalls out at the Ken McDonald Fields uh, Park out there, none of which have fire rings. And I would like to see if we couldn't make a motion to install 16 fire rings out at the Ken McDonald Sports Field where people can uh, hook up their trailers. We do have hookups out there, electric hookups, and we have bathroom facilities with shower. And I think it would be nice if we were to install 16 fire rings out there. So that would be my motion is that we purchase and install 16 fire rings, not to exceed $200 each to be installed at the Ken McDonald Park. All right, any questions, Councilor Shomas? Yes, uh, Your Worship, just a, a question to administration here to the Recreation Department. Uh, are those spots uh, booked uh, by individuals, or are they more or less booked for for events that that happen out there? Can you just clarify? Because it's not like being at the trout pond where you know you can go and camp. It's kind of you know behind uh, closed doors over in that area there. They are open to the public for booking. Um, they are underutilized, I think, partly because it's a green space and power, and the power is 15 amp. Um, they're largely used for events. So during ball tournaments and whatnot, they will be used for those. And then overflow for Legion Park, sometimes when they have large events, they're used. We have one gentleman out there camping right now. So they are open at all times. Excuse me, a follow-up question. So do you find that, uh, that they are used uh, regularly for just individuals that just want to camp there? Not often, no. Thank you. Councillor Brun. Could it be the fact though there are no firings there, that's why they're not using it? It could be, yes. We, we, we did discuss this last year at a rec board meeting, the idea of expanding those campgrounds, but we didn't um, move anywhere with that, from what I recall. It, there was no support for that at that time. Um, yeah, there, literally it's a green space. It's a piece of grass and trees around it and power. So there are no fire pits, there are no picnic tables. We allow outdoor barbecues and whatnot. There. Yep, propane fire pits. We've had a tent out there for two weeks. I know this one's sitting there. I can't say I've seen a trailer park there, but uh, I think it's uh, something very interesting we should look at. And uh, it, it, the fire pit itself, the ring is not the cost. It's uh, probably the installation and the setup around it. But I think it's something we should definitely look at doing, whether or not we can do it now. But I think it's a fabulous idea to do it. I guess just the only question I've got, I, yeah. Campfire is always great at a campsite. Um, but uh, I get two questions, I guess. Can I ask the chief? Uh, is there anything problematic you're in from, uh, from the fire safety perspective whatsoever? Uh, no, we, it covers all aspects of the bylaw. And as long as the fire pit ring is designed and is built according to the bylaw, it has no great. great, thank you. The only other question I got, just uh, Councillor Garner related to your motion. Is two hundred dollars sufficient to cover a? From some of the preliminary research I've done, I think it could work. And uh, is is sure that the cost. I, that's that's the thing? I just I just I hate to limit our administration if we come up with a figure and that's not adequate. <laughs> so I guess, Mr. Armfeld, any input in that scenario? Uh, my direction to council would be that if you're intending on uh, expanding those camping. Uh, facilities there that you actually pass a motion back to have the recreation board consider this and then bring those statistics and information back to council for council's consideration um, I'm always one that likes to go you know things in their order and we um, have our capital considerations happen in uh, November for the next calendar year so that we can plan our workloads for our staff and dropping, while it doesn't seem much, like a dozen camp, uh, fire pits for install between now and whenever council sets that deadline. Uh, our crews are actually quite obligated, our parks crews are actually quite obligated at this time of year, weeding and mowing. Um, so not to say that they don't have the capacity, but it would remove them from their standard suite of duties in order to go and install the rings. And since you asked, um, consistent with my approach to do things in order. I think order in this case would be to refer it back to the rec board for their conversation and consideration first. 
Right. Councilor Travis? Yes, uh, Your Worship, I'd like to ask a question of our two recreation members. Now, this did come up a year ago in a discussion, and, and you, at that time you decided not to proceed ahead. Could you give us some, some background uh, why you didn't want to enhance those facilities? Mr. Thames. Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, through to Councillor Strovis, it was brought up and we had talked about it at Kenny Max and we decided at the rec board, let's finish the trout pond and get that up and running and the things and then we would revisit Kenny Max and what we wanted to do there. There was some concerns about putting fire pits there, wood burning fire pits, and then you had uh, soccer tournaments and you had uh, baseball tournaments and these people are out there playing baseball and you get somebody with a fire pit and smoke, you know, from some stinking wood burning. So we had decided at rec board in the conversation, let's get the trout pond done first and then revisit what we're doing at Kenny Mac if we wanted to do anything or not do anything. And I was gonna echo, I was gonna bring that up. I think it should go back to the rec board because there was some, some discussion and I don't remember the whole discussion that's over a year ago, but I think we need to go visit what was said at the rec board in the minutes. And I would agree with Mr. Armfeld that it should go to the rec board because there was some discussion on whether it was the right thing or the wrong thing to do over at Kenny Max. <coughs> All right, thank you. Um, with that, Councilor Yarn, there is a motion on the table, and that would be up to yourself how you're feeling with all the information and or the our administration well, I, recommendations. I think it's a great idea, and uh, I don't want to buck the system, so I'm okay if it goes back with some dispatch to the rec board, but I'd like to see something happen. So, yeah, I can withdraw respectfully withdraw, withdraw my motion and hope that the rec board can see fit to maybe push it forward. Yeah, I guess just a question, uh, we'll accept that then. Uh, is the rec board still meeting in the summer or not till September now? Not planned to meet until September. Okay, okay. So I guess um, you can certainly ask for that to be on the next agenda. That, that's appropriate, right, Mr. Arfield? Absolutely. A council could pass a motion requesting a specific item right. be put on the right. record agenda. Yeah. So would you be comfortable doing a motion in that regard, Councillor Garner? Very comfortable. All right. So if you're willing to do that now or yeah, wait sure. till if, we're if, if we could put done on with the other stand items. Yeah, sure. if we could put on the recreation board's agenda for the next meeting to, to investigate the cost of installing sixteen fire rings out of Ken McDonald's park. I think that would make me happy and a lot of others. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry now. Thank you. Any other standing item topics come up at all? All right. With that, uh, we're into our delegation phase. So that's not till 5 p.m. So I would just ask for a motion to uh, uh, recess until 5 p.m. and move it to, move into the delegation presentation. Councillor Becker. So move, Mr. Mayor. Motion on the table. All in favor? Chair Downs, thank you.
uh, welcome out and about again. Uh, so you have in front of you uh, Mr. Dan Magnan. He's from uh, ATCO and he's here to discuss uh, a renewed franchise agreement with the town of Tabor. So, Mr. All right. Magnan. Thank you, Mr. Magnan. All right. Well, thank you, Corey. And yes, this is the first time I've had a suit jacket on in quite some time, so taking some <clears> adjusting <throat> too. Uh, yeah, as Corey mentioned, I am the new manager of operations uh, for ATCO South Districts. Um, recently moved down here with my family in late 2019 and uh, really enjoying southern Alberta so far. Uh, as Corey mentioned, I'm here to talk about the ADCO franchise agreement. Uh, it did pass out some binders. Uh, you all have them on your desk. Uh, there's a couple of tabs. We won't be going through them all. What I will be going through today is just the existing and proposed agreement. But if you are curious about historical fees related to the franchise fee, uh, or the renewal process, you can find it in that booklet. All right, so I've got control here. Remember to do that. All right, so what is a franchise agreement? Uh, the agreement. to deliver them in within the terms and conditions outlined in that agreement. A little history between ATCO and Tabor. We have been serving the town of Tabor since 1929, although back in those days it was Canadian Western Natural Gas. Uh, we are, or you are served by, uh, sorry, three employees uh, who live and work here in Tabor, and we do have an office and have had an office in Tabor for quite some time. And we do provide service to just under 3,500 customers. All right, uh, Town of Tabor Franchise Agreement. As Corey mentioned, the agreement did expire in May of 2020, um, but there is no worry, it will continue in perpetuity until it is either renewed or canceled. Uh, in the agreement, I will mention, uh, there is a uh, clause in there that is meant to um, promote uh, getting together between the municipalities and the utility. Uh, and if the agreement does go beyond 12 months, um, the utility does have the ability to half uh, part of the franchise free and hold it in trust uh, until the, either the agreement is renewed or terminated. Now, ATCO has never actually had to exercise that right, but I just wanted to mention it is a clause in the agreement. <clears throat> And I should have mentioned before, if there are any questions as I'm going, this is a very interactive presentation, so please feel free to ask at any point. All right, so the agreement today, so the current agreement is based on the AUMA uh, template from 2003, and the proposed agreement is based on the 2015 template. Uh, and for those of you who aren't aware, the Alberta, or sorry, the AUMA um, does create these these agreements or contracts on behalf of all municipalities. And the there is an electric one that I believe Fortis ha or, uh, Tabor has with Fortis. It is very similar, although there are a couple of differences uh, if you do review that one. 
All right, the agreement term. This is one thing that council will need to decide upon should they decide to go forward. Uh, there is a minimum of 10 years and a maximum of 20 years. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it does continue uh, in effect until after the expiry date unless it is renewed or terminated. And there's where you find some language around uh, the clause that I mentioned earlier. Any questions on the term? So grant of franchise does grant ATCO exclusive rights to install pipe in municipal right-of-ways uh, for delivering gas to customers in Tabor. Uh, the municipality does commit not to grant these rights to any other gas utility. And in turn, ATCO does agree to bear the full responsibility uh, of the services delivered as per our delivery tariff. All right, franchise fees. This is rider A that you will see on your um, your uh, gas or power bill. Um, the fee is exclusive for uh, municipal right away or for us to use municipal right of ways uh, within the town of Tabor. Uh, Tabor currently has two separate fees. Those ones are a little bit outdated. I believe they have been changed. Um, but for low and mid customers, it's at 20%, and for high use customers, it would be at 35%. Now, this fee can be adjusted annually to a prescribed cap of 35%. We just ask that it be communicated to us before November 15th of every year. All right, core and extra services. Within the agreement, it does outline our core services. So, you know, changing gas meters, providing gas service, uh, responding to emergencies, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but there is a Schedule B in there that does allow the municipality to have ADCO complete certain work on their behalf. Uh, and would be collected through a separate rider. Now, this is another clause in here that I don't believe has ever been um, been exercised before, but it is an option should you choose so. All right, municipal taxes. This would be rider B that you would see on your uh, energy bill. Uh, and it provides the opportunity uh, for the utility to collect linear taxes in addition to the franchise fee. Uh, and it's collected just from the, the citizens within Tabor. All right, the sale of the natural gas distribution system. It outlines the municipality's right, uh, subject to AEC approval, uh, to purchase the system from ATCO at the time of expiry. Uh, and the price for that would be negotiated and if unresolved, uh, it would go to the AUC for determination. Provision for plans and equipment in the agreement, it does outline uh, what what uh, work uh, we will provide uh, the town of Tabor with plans for. Um, and it does outline some cooperation between ADCO and Tabor's fire department as well uh, to provide training and equipment for them to respond to natural gas emergencies. All right, further to the slide I talked about uh, regarding the sale of the distribution system. Uh, within there, there is a clause that talks about right of first refusal. So if ATCO did receive an offer to purchase assets within the town of Tabor only and not part of a, a larger scale asset swap, uh, the town of Tabor would have the right of first refusal to purchase from ATCO. Now, if the municipality did exercise this right to purchase and then decide to sell within five years, ATCO would then have the right of first refusal to purchase it back. Uh, construction and maintenance of the gas system. This is another uh, clause that council will need to decide upon uh, where it speaks to major work. Now we do recommend um, in terms of notification and providing plans that this be set at $100,000 um, just so that we're not coming to administration with you know every disconnect or every little piece of work that we do within the town. Um, Uh, cost of relocation, so ATCO will relocate its facilities in municipally owned property to accommodate municipal work at our cost, provided that your municipality provides one year's notice, uh, that there is a suitable location, um, and that ATT or the municipality considers ATCO's cost in determination of the relocation. Uh, and I will mention too that in this case, it would, the municipality would not be acting as a landowner or developer, sorry. All right, uh, distribution system expansion. ATCO will extend its distribution system to provide service to customers at no cost uh, to the municipality, um, 
provided that water and sewer has been extended to that area of the community. All right, should there be an increase in municipal boundaries? Um, it does grant ADCO uh, the right to serve those new customers if the size of the annexation is 25% of the current size of the municipality or less. And then for larger annexations, uh, there would be a formula added to that um, uh, to either compensate the other uh, utilities in the area or in rare cases have a split franchise where you would have um, you know, part of the community serviced by a smaller co-op and the rest serviced by ATCO. Uh, joint use of municipal right-of-ways. It does allow the municipality to use the right-of-ways granted to ATCO for their purposes as long as it doesn't interfere with the natural gas lines. Uh, and ATCO does allow other uh, utility companies to um, use those right-of-ways as well. I do believe that we encourage and have been doing joint trench within Tabor for quite some time. So a lot of efficiencies have been seen with that. All right, uh, just getting to the end of the presentation here, talking about some other clauses. Uh, within it, it does allow the municipality to be a retailer. Um, so other municipalities have exercised this. Uh, City of Camrose, for example, is a competitive retailer. Uh, so something to consider. Reciprocal indemnification and liability, um, holding each other harmless for work associated with the agreement, provided that it is done within the um, confines of that agreement. Uh, assignments and notices, outlines how and what forms of notice are permitted. Interruptions of service, so we do our best to avoid any service disruptions. Uh, and I believe we haven't had any <coughs> services or a significant service disruption in Tabor for uh, quite some time. Uh, there is a mechanism for dispute settlements within the agreement. Uh, it does cite the Water, Gas and Electric Companies Act uh, for consent before we perform certain functions. Uh, force majeure does outline some obligations if there were a force majeure event. The terms and conditions, it confirms that ACO's AUC approved T's and C's apply to this, uh, servicing that municipality. Uh, it is only exclusive between uh, ADCO and the municipality, not the Crown. And uh, it does speak to severed ability, so it lines the effect or impact on the agreement should have, a clause rendered invalid, uh, unenforceable, or illegal. Uh, amendments can be made at any time, provided that they are written. Uh, it speaks to waivers, defaults, breaches of non-compliance, and then finally confidentiality. Right, so uh, Alberta Constant counts on ATCO. We've been doing this a very long time, since 1912. Um, we provide service to about 1.2 uh, million customers in 300 communities across Alberta. And further to that, our commitment to safety. Uh, like I mentioned before, we have three employees stationed within the town of Tabor, uh, available to respond 24 seven to any type of emergency or event that would come up. All right, that concludes my presentation. Is there any questions from the Mayor Council? All right, thank you, Councilor Baker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Magnon, is it? Magnon, yes. Okay, uh, under a core and extra services, Schedule A, I fully understand, mm -hmm. Schedule B, extra services. Can you give us an example of that, please? Sure, uh, so if the municipality wanted ADCO to uh, read water meters, for example, that is something that we could consider doing. Uh, and then the cost of that would be collected through a rider that would be applied to the residents within the municipality only. Yep. All right, thank you. Any other questions arising? Councillor Bruin. Mr. Mayor, um, this is the long lines. How, what is our gas supply like for the town of Tabor? Like if we had a big expansion, do we have the ability to, with the pipelines we have now, we have a lot of volume Yes, so there is a main trunk line, main transmission trunk line on the south side of Tabor um, that has sufficient supply for Tabor. Um, and industrial parks in Tabor um, have sufficient supply for your typical customer. Now, Lots of room for expansion or? Yeah, absolutely. If an atypical customer were to come into the community, I mean, there would be a certain build required in order to meet 
you know, significant demand, but mm -hmm. I mean, we're in the business of providing energy and absolutely we can provide whatever type of energy would be required for the specific build. Okay, thank you. Great, any other questions? Councillor Becker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, towards administration, I guess. Did we not reduce franchise fees in our last deliberation, Mr. Armfeld? Yes, we did. Uh, I believe I uh, dropped 3% or 2%. 2% each. Yeah, it wasn't reflected in the presentation, but it is yeah, 18 and 33, 33. Thank you. Right. Any other questions whatsoever? All right. Well, I thank you so much for your presentation. Pleasure. Someone prepared to make a motion as well. Councilor Becker? Mr. Mayor, I'll vote. Mr. Arfield, do you have a question? Um, no, I won't interrupt. Uh, if you you go ahead. Oh, I was just, if I missed, sorry, I didn't, didn't notice it. Uh, well, I just thought, yes. Mr. Magnet, you might want to provide council with a bit of an update on where we're going. This this isn't going to be the first and only time that you're interfacing with council through this uh, process of reestablishing an agreement. Right. So there is some requirements with the Alberta Utilities Commission for us to file. Uh, and that administration will be coming to council with first, second, and third readings, which we can expect to take a couple of weeks or a couple of months before the, the entire thing will be finalized, should council choose to move forward with it. Okay, great. Uh, any other questions arising as a result of that new information? All right, perfect. Thank you again. Councillor Becker. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I'll move that council accepts the presentation from ATCO Gas for information purposes. Thank you. A motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried now. Thank you once again. <clears throat> and if we could move on to uh, item 7.2, Delegation Tabor Christian School, uh, Mr. Arpel. Yes, as Council is aware, uh, Tabor Christian School is looking at expanding. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, Mr. Angermeyer, who is here to make a request of Council, and he may have another guest with him, but you'll have to introduce your, your other guest. Smith Phillips. All right, thank you, gentlemen. All right, thanks for having us. As said, I'm Renee Angermeyer. I'm a teacher at Tabor Christian School, also a member of the Tabor Christian High School Committee. And with me is Klaus Hoekstra. He's the principal of our K-9 campus. And I can say that now because we have, or are starting a high school in September. So I've been at the school for 17 years. Over that time, we've built on three times. We've, in 2009, we had 99 students. And this year we have over 400 in K through nine. So there's been a need for a high school program. We've been talking about it for quite a few years. And this is the year we're moving ahead with it, even though um, the world's been a weird place last three months, we're still moving ahead. And we are opening a high school September of this year. And the long range plan, it's actually hopefully shorter, sooner than later, is to build a brand new building. The first year or two we'll be renting at the Christian Reform Church, they've just done in addition with a small gym and a couple classrooms. So we're starting with a grade 10 class this year. And then the plan is to build just south of Ken Mac. We're looking at a piece of land there. Um, our society board who owns and operates our school building. So just so everyone's aware, we are um, an alternative program. So our society, our parent society owns our property, owns our building and runs it. Uh, Klaus will speak later about some funds that do come in from Horizon and the provincial government for operations. But for the most part, we own and operate our building. And the plan is to build. And I sat on the recreation board for three years. One of the things that kept coming up over and over was an indoor soccer field. So what we want to talk about is just the idea of if we are building a new school, let's talk about building that as part of this. And Klaus, you can add to that. Yeah, the start of our conversation when we uh, began the whole high school program, uh, we thought, uh, what can we do to uh, not only uh, grow our program, but 
uh, offer a facility that uh, would help our town as well and other schools, uh, Horizon School Division and uh, St. Pat's and St. Mary's as well. And so as we uh, look to purchase land, and I think you're all well aware of uh, where we are in that process, um, we thought we would like to invite the town in a conversation of if there could be a shared facility. Uh, we don't know what that looks like, uh, but we definitely did not want to pass on the opportunity of having that conversation if that's something council is uh, interested in. So one of the reasons for that as well, we said, you know, how often in a town our size does a brand new school get built? So we plan on building a full-size school with a full-size gymnasium. And there's lots of land that we're looking at and being right next to Ken Mack. We thought it'd just be a shame if we at least didn't talk about it. If we didn't come to you and just talk about, hey, this something, if it is in the plans, maybe we can work together and make it happen and obviously there's lots of research that would have to be done and uh, dollars raised but and we understand that but we want to initiate the conversation great well thank you and uh i was uh uh privileged to be part of the the presentation with the recreation board as well recently and as well as two of our council members <clears throat> so uh yes any other questions arise as well Councilor Becker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gentlemen, uh, can you give us a reasonable expectation date of the building? We like to dream big. Uh, reasonable, reason I said. Reasonable. <laughs> we were hoping that by this September we could break ground, but that was back, uh, you know, a year and a half ago. And we understand, like our fundraising, we pretty much stopped our fundraising when the COVID-19 uh, hit us uh, as a town, of course, as a world as well. And so we're not sure what September looks like. Uh, we're pretty sure we're not breaking ground by that point. Um, and we're also flexible. Like we, we're going to be the GC or the general contractor ourselves. Uh, so we have lots of flexibility in when we're actually br breaking ground and moving forward. All right. Any other questions arising? None whatsoever. Councilor Brown. I'd, I'd just like to say I think it's a fantastic idea and hopefully this is something we could work on together because uh, we did tour the one facility I believe it is in Strathmore attached to the, the school, attached to the the, uh, the uh, dry sports complex. So it's interesting, but uh, it'd be definitely a fine location for one. Yeah, we've heard a lot about the Strathmore location. We have plans to go visit as well. Just that, uh, yeah, we have a better idea of yeah, how it could look but we've heard nothing but great things about Strathmore so that's definitely would, would it be would you consider a standalone or would you attach it to the school so do you want to speak to it okay. so the idea would be that the school building um, it would be part of the building but separate at the same time where people using it after hours wouldn't have access to the school building but our students could use it during the day without having to go outside. Strathmore would be a very interesting tour for you to see how they handled that. Yeah, that was a great facility. It's, uh, it, is, it is all in one building all combined, but they've got an interesting way to uh, handle the security side for <clears throat> one with the school and one with the, uh, the uh, recreation facility. So uh, yeah, it's, to me, it's certainly worth something exploring as possibilities. And uh, uh, I'm sure our administration would have a lot of input with that as well, with through our recreation department also, and, and uh, yes, absolutely, there's always a need for more recreation. And that's that's something we're definitely missing is a multi-use facility of some sort. So this is another possible option. I guess the question we have too is, what are the next steps? Like, if um, moving forward, if it's in agreement, it is a good idea, and we move forward. Uh, how do we go about? making it happen or starting that discussion? Well, I think, like I said, Mr. Arnfeld, I think if you can just uh, help me out a little bit with this, but basically this is the first step, or second step, I guess it's gone to the Recreation Board, so we're the second step. And uh, the formality of uh, we may or may not come with some way of motion tonight. It may just be for information, depending on what the rest of Council's desire is. But uh, but that's generally what, uh, what we, at the very least, we would accept it for information and then have this come back at a later date. Correct, Mr. Arville? 
Yes, your your worship is whatever council would like to direct administration to do. Uh, ultimately, uh, if you give us a pretty pres prescriptive marching orders, then you know we know exactly what we're doing. Uh, if uh, if you'd like to bring it back, then we'll bring it back for another date for another conversation. All right, thank you, Councillor Strauss. Yes, uh, your worship, just some comments that I also think this is a great idea. I mean, we've had this multi-use facility on, you know, on. on on our side table for for a number of years, and I, I think that the best place to handle this would be through the rec board, because it's got representation there from the MD as well. Because this is this is definitely a project that should have MD, town, and and the, the school should be a three way partnership, uh, and I think that would probably be the best way that would be handled. And I know myself, I would I would certainly support this on a go forward basis. I think this this is tremendous, and this may be the partnership that uh, that we were waiting for before we proceed down this road. So, uh, you know, my hats go off to you guys to uh, you know to keep at it, and uh, maybe we will put some provisions in place for for some some more uh, uh, groundwork to be put into place, and and hopefully that'll be through the recreation board through with the MD in conjunction. Thank you. And I, I would echo that, Councillor Strollers, but I think, uh, you know, for the sake of what we're doing, um, you know, the rec board sent it to town council for consideration. The town council thinks that this is a good step. I think that, you know, it could go back to rec board, but I think our rec, our rec director and administration need to have uh, conversations with these gentlemen so we get a better vision of what we're planning. We all kind of know what we're thinking and what we want. You don't have a definite date for breaking ground. We don't have a definite plan for what we're looking for to build, and also with our partner, the MD. And I think that you know we need to have some conversations with our director of recreation and our administration team more so, so that we have a, a, a better picture of what we're talking about. Right now, it's uh, for lack of a better word, it's a dream, and it's a good dream, but it's still a dream. And I think we need to have our rec department and our administration have some conversations so we get some clarity of what we're trying to do is my thought on this. Mr. Firth. Mr. Mayor, I just had a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure where you're at in your planning, but did you have an idea what you had budgeted for the gymnasium portion of this high school? We are looking at an entire project of somewhere between 3.5 and 4.5 million. Uh, a gymnasium, a full gymnasium is 1, 1.2. Sorry, and then I just had Thank you. Sorry, I just had one question. question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and where do the majority of the high school students um, that move on to before? Right now, the majority of our students are heading to St. Mary's, um, some to Myers, and a good amount to homeschool. And I would use that term loosely, if that makes sense. Mr. Garner. Thank you, gentlemen, for attending. Um, do you have a rough breakdown as to uh, where your students are from town, town versus MD? Do you have a rough percentage? We could provide that for you. Uh, I don't have that offhand right now. Okay, no, I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I think it would be helpful as we move forward and maybe look at partner sh partnerships that uh, that might be valuable information. So if I had to guess, it's probably a 60-40 split, 60 town, 40 the empty. Yeah, and I'm, no one's going to hold you to a specific number, but I think it would be it would be in good information. So, Mr. Strauss? Yes, just uh, to our delegation here, uh, Your Worship, uh, uh, do any of your still, uh, students still uh, go off to Lethbridge to Emmanuel Christian? Uh, nope, not anymore. Not at all? Uh, I think uh, two years ago was the last time we sent a student. You know what, the transportation is a, a major hindrance for going all the way to Lethbridge. Thank you. Mr. Becker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a very worthwhile discussion, and I think it bears uh, further discussion, of course, and also some decisions to be made in the not-too-distant future. However, as you gentlemen just mentioned, you're on, under budgetary constraints for uh, fundraising because of COVID-19. Believe me, so are we. The town is in pretty tough shape budget-wise, financial, and uh, we cannot rely forever on other forms of government, orders of governments to bail us out. So therefore, we've got to make some hard decisions also. At the same time, let's make those hard decisions together. All right. 
Well, thank you once again, gentlemen, for your presentation. Very well done. And uh, I look forward to some uh, more positive information coming forward. And all the best of luck with your project going forward as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, with that, uh, somebody prepared to make a motion? Councilor Tams. I'd have to have a question for Mr. Armfelf to maybe help me with this, that if we accept it for information and direct um, administration to have uh, further contact with Tabor Christian School, would that cover it so that it, it doesn't fall off the radar? Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir. With that, Mr. Mayor, then I'd like to make a motion. All right. That we accept the presentation from, from Tabor Christian School for information and direct administration to have further conversations with the Tabor Christian School regarding a high school and a field house concept building. All right. Thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried now. Thank you. All right, uh, we're on to item eight, media inquiries. We have no media here. Do we have any uh, contact from? No inquiries media? this evening, right. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, all right then, then I would ask for a motion to move into closed session, please. Councilor Broom. I so make it. Motion to move into closed session. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now, we'll see. Thank you. You just catch that door, Al? Okay, thank you. <laughs>